this is a part two. So excited, and I have quite a few questions. And I want to introduce uh, Bruna, which is my sister, and uh, she's a beauty therapist, esthetician, international instructor uh, in uh, the uh, beauty industry, and she has a special interest in uh, health and wellness. However, Bruna, in the recent years, you have been focusing mainly on uh, nutrigenomics and epigenetics. A lot of people do not know what that is, but uh, it's very exciting. Maybe sometimes we can talk a little bit more about that. So natural protocols for health and wellness, utilizing the body's ability to correct itself. That is cool, so cool. Last week, we had a very exciting uh, uh, part one. A lot of my uh, uh, subscribers, they were so awed by you and uh, the knowledge that you put together and uh, everything that they, they wanted more. They said, uh, Maria, we want part two, part three, part four, and said, okay, okay. <laughs> Let me see what she wants to do. Yeah, so you can go there, uh, part one, and it's really amazing. It's about 15 minutes packed with uh, information. So Bruna, part two, and uh, one of the questions that I have for you, which uh, a lot of my uh, uh, followers have been asking is, okay, Maria, ask Bruna, which type is best, liquid, powder, or pills? So please give us a little bit of uh, explanation which one you think is best. First of all, thank you so much for having me uh, here again. <laughs> so um, let's first understand the sources of collagen, the, the whole food sources, because that really is the best way to get your collagen, to be able to ingest and eat a good, um, healthy diet. So things like uh, bone broth, chicken, fish, eggs, uh, beans and nuts even, green leafy vegetables. I mean, the studies show that chlorophyll increases precursors to collagen. Uh, eat a mm -hmm. lot of garlic. Um, if you have a recipe with this amount of garlic, double it because the sulfur yeah. in it is a trace element that also synthesizes um, collagen. And be sure to also include your citrus fruits, your berries, because vitamin C is the body's precursors to collagen, right? And it plays a major role in the production. So eating a healthy diet is essential for general health as well as collagen production. And um, the one thing that you bring up a lot is the sugar. Make sure that you stay away from sugar uh, because mm -hmm. refined carbs and sugar, they can cause inflammation and damage. That, that is the nature of nutrigenomics, how food source triggers yeah. genetic expression. But that's another topic, yes. Yes. <laughs> As you know, fa faced with the origin of our foods, where we import it from, we're not sure that we're always getting the most ripe food or has the most essential ingredients that we need. And mm -hmm. uh, sometimes it's not ripened on the farm, it's ripened on the truck that it was transported in. Um, and and that's, that's, that's important. So supplementing uh, is important with collagen, in my opinion. So pills, powder, or liquid. So here we go. Uh, the pills, they're the same as a powder. They're compressed together and they form a tablet or sometimes they take the powder and they put it in a, a veggie cap or, or some yes. type of capsule, right? They're easy to transport and carry around with you. Uh, but they can contain sometimes chemicals and fillers to hold that pill together. Um, mm -hmm. or making sure that the, the pill, the powder uh, does not clog the machines. So they'll use things that will make it flow, like flowing agents. That's the things that you're faced with the pill. Also, the pill needs to be broken down in the stomach acid. So your body has to break it down, get past that, that covering, whether it's a capsule or, um, or a tablet, and that takes time. And so there's no. not as much absorption with a tablet. A tablet will have about a thousand milligrams of, um, of collagen, whereas a couple of scoops of powder or a liquid dose will have up to 10,000. So to, okay. to get the equivalent, you're looking at taking 10 times the amount in pills. So if they tell you, if the bottle says take six tablets a day, you probably have to take double that in order to get the the same amount of milligrams and then your body has to break it down and that's okay. going to take more time so you're, you're getting less absorption the powder uh, is easy to mix it's my go-to when i travel because it's easy to carry around and have your liquid it is less expensive uh, but yeah. be careful about um, the collagen is made into different uh, sizes and some not all products but sometimes the the larger molecules will fall down to the bottom of the tub and then you need to kind of shake it to make sure that you're getting a consistent dose. 
Yeah, right now I'm traveling and I'm, I did bring with me uh, powder. So this is really important for me to know because carrying liquid and the glass is too heavy. It is a so. little heavy and uh, most people now traveling want to uh, carry their bags and not check it in so that that can be uh, an issue. In my opinion is the one that I go to first. It's ready to drink. It's easily absorbable in the liquid form. Uh, but again, it's more expensive, right? Um, however, when you drink it, it's you don't need to mix it with anything. It's ready to be absorbed. And as you drink it, it coats the intestinal walls and it's much easier to absorb. Um, almost 90 to 95% absorption over the 40 to 50% absorption that you get with a... a so much yeah. sense. Exactly. Yeah, I know myself, I do prefer the liquid, but when I travel, I have to go to the powder. Powder. Yeah. And, and powder and pills, they seem like the most affordable, uh, but the liquid collagen is more effective way to stimulate your body's ability to make collagen too. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So Bruna, second question is, uh, which type of collagen source do you suggest? That's a good question. So let's get one out of the way, uh, the vegan uh, option. Um, I have a lot of people ask me, uh, is there a vegan version that you suggest? And right now there's really no such thing. I mean, scientists are uh, genetically modifying yeast and, and um, bacteria to try and develop an animal-free version. And I understand and respect um, people that want that option. But right now, the only ones that we really have that, that we have studies that work are bovine and marine. And it's about the bioavailability, how much enters your bloodstream. Because there are supplements that are highly bioavailable, that they easily slip through the gut barrier and those that are not, that they stay in the gut for a long time. When it comes to digestion of food, which are in large particles are broken down into smaller particles, small enough to go through the gut barrier, then the long process of digestion is good. It's the way that we extract nutrients from foods, but when we consume a supplement or a medication, the most beneficial is the supplements and medications that absorb quickly that have the yes. best chance to enter the bloodstream in its original form without being broken down too much. Okay, so my understanding, sorry, but uh, vegan is out for now. And uh, bovine, it's okay, but uh, fish is best or the marine one is best, correct? Bovine and fish don't have okay. an equal amount of studies to support one against the other. Okay. I think they're both good. I think you they're can both. get good benefits from both. I prefer the uh, sustainability of uh, marine collagen. I'm prepared to pay more for these smaller molecules. And I tend to go to marine before bovine. But it's okay. not to say that bovine doesn't have good studies to support it as well. They both do. Okay. Wow. That sounds, that sounds good. So my last one. Uh, and uh, number three, what do you look for in a product before you buy it? Good question. Uh, not all collagen is created equal. I'm going to give you a short story about a friend of mine who was experiencing health concerns. Now, he was a nuclear physicist by trade. Wow. And organic chemistry was his hobby. Wow. So a smart guy. And uh, he chose to treat his health concern naturally because he had friends in Europe that were doing it naturally, very successfully. He was in Canada, so he decided to go to the health food store and check out what products were available to him. And he came out of the store horrified. He's telling me the story, and I said, what do, what do you mean? He said, well, did you pass high school chemistry? <laughs> well, kind, yeah, sure. Um, do you remember what happens when you mix an acid and a base? And I go, uh, nothing, it neutralizes. He goes, good, you passed. Well, a lot of these products will have vitamins that are acidic, will have herbs that are alkaline, and in the bottle themselves, they can't work. The product can't work. So sometimes more is not better. More stuff on the label is not necessarily better. And so what I learned from him, from him is that, yes, to check the label, but be sure that you know that the brand that you're using is transparent about where they source their uh, collagen and the processing method. How is the collagen extracted? How is it converted from the raw animal collagen to the broken down peptide? Do they use chemicals? Do they use enzymes? Do they use water? And is it traceable? 
And is there third party testing for contaminants, pesticides, hormones, heavy metals? A lot of these companies don't have to test for that with every batch of ingredients that they get. They're required to test every three or four. Um, and that's scary to me. I'd like to have a company that, that checks every single product that comes out of their mm -hmm. uh, manufacturing plant. So those are the things to look at. And sometimes it's, you don't see it on the label, right? You need to make a little, no. a little, a little extra effort in doing some research, looking at the company. The nice thing is that we have the internet at our fingertips and we can find out lots about different manufacturers and, and companies. And to end this, it's about the bioavailability. What is the quickest way and most effective to get that collagen past the gut into your bloodstream and to the tissue that's required? But most of us, Bruna, uh, they do not go and look at the, uh, the ingredients. You just grab one and away you go. So what we need to be more proactive before we put something in our body, correct? Just take a little bit of time to analyze uh, which product is best for you. I mean, there's lots of videos now that oh, yeah. explain this, that help you uh, wade through all the products and see which one is best for you. And we're not here to tell you, don't take one, take the other. We're just giving you some pointers to make a choice for yourself about which one is best for you. I mean, we've decided which one is best for us. Uh, we yeah. have a couple of options, like when we travel. Um, and so we're going to give you a couple of, of um, different products in the next video. Great. Okay, Bruno, so announce a little bit what is going to be in, in uh, part three. So part three, I'd like to go over uh, more about the types of collagen. I mean, you, you, I'm sure your viewers have seen when they look at the collagen product, there's type one, type two, type three, some have type four and five. We have that we know so far 28 different types of collagen. Um, mm. And there could be more, there could be more. Yeah. So the idea is um, which types do we really need to take uh, and which mm -hmm. ones don't matter as much. A lot of the collagens are important, like type one is the most important one. However, mm. there's lots of other collagen that help with the structure of type one. Yeah. It's important to know which collagen actually makes it to the cell based on the product. What I learned from my friend is the bioavailability is key. He made his mm -hmm. own product and he designed it in a way that the cell would accept the product because sometimes the way that the product is made is not bioavailable. Wow, Bruna, so thank you so much for taking some time from your busy life and your granddaughter and uh, everything in your life. I really appreciate this 10, 15 minutes that you have shared with us. Thank, thanks for having me, Maria. I really appreciate it. I know you're on vacation, so enjoy your trip. And yes. uh, we'll, we'll chat again soon. Thank you. Okay. Take care, Bruna.